We too can do the same for the state of Connecticut. Combining vision, hard work, dedication to a goal, and a cooperative effort. It is my belief that there are three important principles of government. The first is honesty. It is absolutely essential to be honest with the people. The leadership has also to be honest with itself. This is not just a quaint theory. It's essential for democratic government to succeed. The people have, know, have to know the truth in order for them to retain their trust in us. Moreover, these people, the people, know, have to know the truth in order to understand the situation and the actions that will be necessary to improve the situation. We have seen an appalling lack of candor from the current administration and ultimately it is destructive to our long-term well-being. The second principle is cooperation and engagement. Good governors simply do not issue edicts or pontificate. They talk with people and most importantly they listen. There should be an ongoing dialogue with other elected leaders, advocates, interest groups, businesses and unions. We should never forget that we leaders elected by the people are also of and for the people. No one person has all the answers and indeed no one person even knows what questions to ask. The third principle follows from the first two. If we have an honest appraisal of our situation and we have constructive engagement of the public with honest discussion and frank dialogue, there must be solid proactive action. All the task forces and meetings of this present administration have, produ have produced a lot of meetings and reports, but no action. It takes leadership to change actions, to change words into actions. We have known since November that we were falling rapidly into a deep recession and for the state government a fiscal crisis. Was there honesty and candor about the depth and severity of the crisis? No. Was there an attempt to engage the legislature, the business community, labor unions, advocates to help everyone understand the nature of that crisis? No. Was there adequate leadership? No. Was there leadership that, churned, that changed words into results? No. Connecticut needs and deserves a governor who will be driving from the front seat. My vision for Connecticut encompasses three key issues. Rebuilding our state economy, reorganizing our state government to become more efficient and effective, to get greater bang for our, our, our taxpayer buck, and helping working families prosper as the bedrock of our society. I believe that there is only one direction, only one direction, in which our economy can head. It is that of a high value added, highly technological, highly educated economy that sells new products and services to the world. We can and should be among the leaders in green technologies, alternative energy, medicine, pharmaceuticals, bioscience, education, information technology, precision manufacturing, and a variety of technologies like nanoscience and others which are just emerging. That is where we need to be if Connecticut is to maintain its high standard of living. While moving in these newer directions, we must do all we can to maintain and strengthen our legacy industries in aerospace, insurance, finance, and tourism. One example of this new economy is the high-tech world of filmmaking. Now, I believe Anthony, and Ralph, Anthony Del Vecchio and Ralph Palumbo are here, but I didn't see it. But I do see somebody who I missed introducing earlier, and that's Bud Salemi. Bud, I just, I'm looking back there, I want to introduce you. Uh, And I want to praise them, Anthony and Ralph, for their Connecticut Studios project. They're bringing a whole new industry to the state. 1,500 to 2,000 jobs, good paying permanent jobs in North Central Connecticut. I'm happy to be working with officials at all levels to make this become a reality. The world is constantly changing. And if we do not change along with it, we are in danger of falling behind. In Connecticut, we will probably never again produce sneakers, and we certainly won't produce typewriters. Our economic system that we live in destroys old technologies and methods of doing things. As a state, we must be on the cutting edge of change. State government must be ahead of the curve, building the infrastructure to welcome and nurture new industries 
that will constitute the new economy. And how do we do this? We need to enhance our university job creation programs by placing MBA students alongside scientists and law school students who are studying patent law and business formation to help create new industries and new jobs. We need to multiply our incubator programs that grow new businesses. We need to provide targeted tax breaks, breaks for high value added and emerging industries. Industries that have high multipliers, that is, in terms of benefits and dollars they bring into the state. We need to aggressively pursue every single federal dollar that puts us on this path. We need to ensure that our universities produce high quality engineers, biologists, actuaries, MBAs, and others that will provide a ready workforce for new blood into the system. We need to ensure that our community colleges provide the pass and the technical courses necessary to move directly into the workforce. And we need to ensure that our primary and secondary schools remain strong, Edith, and make the changes that are necessary to adapt to the changing population and economy. Finally, we need to send a signal to the world that Connecticut is a place that is ready to do business. We need to turn our state government around to become truly business friendly. I constantly hear from business people that it is not the taxes or even the reasonable regulations that bothers them in Connecticut. It is the negative and sometimes, unfortunately, even condescending attitude of many of our agencies that they encounter in dealing with the state. We must turn this around. In almost two decades of unbroken Republican administration, we have seen virtually no governmental reforms that make our state more efficient, more effective, and give us more bang for the buck. Our taxpayers, both individual and corporate, are crying out for such relief. In doing so, we must work collaboratively with our state employees. They are an essential component of this turnaround. Connecticut stands at a historic point in its history. If we continue along the, if we continue along the path we are on, the greatest percentage of our young people, losing the greatest percentage of our young people to other states, losing jobs, losing our tax base, losing businesses, or we can embrace change. I stand here as a Democrat ready to lead, ready to change, to, to make change happen. As a Democrat, my concern for those on the bottom, those who need a hand up, is not diminished. But I know two things. The best social program is a decent job. from the state will not get it without revenues coming to the state. And the state won't get those revenues without a vibrant economy. I'll be meeting with Democrat town committees to hear their concerns about the future of our state, the future of the Democratic Party, and we'll continue to reach out to labor organizations and chambers of commerce and others to listen to their ideas for changing our economic future and forming a consensus on vital issues such as health care, the environment, the high cost of electricity, heating oil and natural gas. I look forward to this incredible journey. I ask you as individuals, and I ask the Democrat Party to embrace the, the priorities that I have stated today and to work for a brighter, better future for the state. I ask Democrats and voters across the state to, the, to give the Democrat Party a mandate to carry out those priorities. I believe in the electoral process and in the good judgment of voters. I believe that if this message reaches the public, it will be embraced and bring us to victory in the year 2010. But more important than victory, we will begin the difficult process of turning the state around and truly rebuilding Connecticut. And with your help, together we can do it. Thank you very much for being here.